Dear friends, today we are going to highlight the nature of learning and learning process which encourage and promote autonomous learning as you know education policy 2020 talks about teacher autonomy and learner autonomy international commission on education for futures 2020 gives more emphasis on the concept of autonomous learning teacher autonomy and learner autonomy let us understand what is the teacher autonomy teacher autonomy as little defined as a capacity for detachment critical reflection decision making and independent action it means we do not depend on others for our action and decision making but this is based on our capabilities for reflecting on our own abilities and empowering ourselves for taking independent decision so when we talk about teacher autonomy we are talking about an autonomous teacher so what is its mean that means a teachers have freedom to study to learn and to teach when i say freedom to study means a teacher is free to have access to learning teacher is free to learn so learning from different conditions and teacher is free to teach and to take decisions about teaching second definition is it is a relative term operating in the context of internal and external constraints no teacher is free such freedom is operated in internal and external constraints in school situation third it is understood as independence of teachers community teachers as a community professional groups to take free decisions related to their professional activities that is teaching related to learners development and their own professional development so three areas comes the teachers are free to take decisions about their own professional activities that is teaching learning practices to take decisions for their own learners development and our own professional progress in this regard we will go for another definition of teacher autonomy how ki 2006 it is the capacity freedom and or responsibility to make choices among one's teaching so a teacher is free to make choice and to decide what is best for teaching and how to adapt and implement own teaching learning practices the definition of teacher autonomy 
the first one is related to self directed teaching it focuses on encouraging reflective learning exercises by teachers and such exercises to be initiated and practiced by teachers and learners second is the freedom to make initiative by teachers in their classroom for encouraging greater freedom not to themselves only but to their learners so teachers freedom must lead to learners freedom teachers capacity is the third area of definition so such definition say the teachers must be professionally developed and teachers should be empowered to learn skills and approaches for fostering autonomy of learners that means teachers autonomy teachers autonomous learning practices and teaching practices must lead to foster learners autonomy and learners freedom now we will focus on promotion of teachers autonomy there are different programs for teacher development as you know we as working teachers we are engaged in professional development activities as in service teachers but such practices also carried out at pre service stage as you people as pre service teacher educators so it is also part of professional development program at pre service stage so at this stage how teacher autonomy will be encouraged now it means the teacher and teacher educators should get proper opportunities for making choice of knowledge pedagogic skills the skills for conducting research technology integrated teaching and learners evaluation strategies in these areas how teachers will be empowered to make own decisions for development of learners we talk about continuous professional development programs so professional development programs highlighting in service education usually they talk about content areas and innovations or changes in the curriculum now we are insisting on lifelong learning programs for teachers so that the teachers capacities will be developed and they must be empowered to learn relearn and to take free decisions for autonomous learning of their students the third area is awareness development programs there must be different approaches how to tackle different constraints that come on the way of teachers development a teacher is not that free to take any project on his own which can be 
implemented in his or her classroom practices. The first constraint comes from her own institution, her own syllabus, her own curricular load, her own loads in institutional activities. So the teacher should be aware of such constraints and within such constraints the teacher should be free to take decisions. The second area is how the teachers will be resilient to face different problems which come on the way of exercising their autonomy in their teaching learning practices. So that capacity must be developed among teachers. Now we talk about learner's autonomy. So teachers are free to study, teachers are free to take decision about teaching, teachers are empowered through professional development programs that is concerned with teacher autonomy. When we talk about teacher promoting learner's autonomy, we must be clear about autonomous learning and autonomous learners. So who is an autonomous learner? Now the learner's ability to take charge of his or her own learning. Usually we say the adults are autonomous learners who take charge of their own learning. But this concept can be extended to children also. So, the autonomous learner is he who takes charge of his or her own learning activities and engaging himself or herself in various programs leading to her own development and learning outcomes. A learner is autonomous who determines the objectives of learning. That why I learn, why I should learn, what are the objectives. So a learner should be engaged to take decision about the objectives. For example, in case of project works, the learners themselves decide what should be the goals, aims and objectives of a project in classroom. The third is the autonomous learner who defines the contents and progressions. The learners are autonomous who take charge of their own learning and decide the contents that what should be the nature of their project, what should be studied, what should be included in their activities. So that will lead to their autonomy. Then fourth area is an autonomous learner selects which method, which means, which approach, which technique will be used for learning practices and projects. Then, an autonomous learner monitors the progress of acquisition of skill, how far we have learned, to what extent we have been successful in achieving the goal, whether our practices are in right direction or not. So, the learners enjoy autonomy in monitoring their own progress. And learners are autonomous ones who assess their own learning at different stages. Such assessment may be at individual level by learner or by peers at group level. So now we will see what are the key principles of autonomous learning. The first principle is learner directed learning. Teacher doesn't direct what should happen or what should not happen. If a role play is to be organized, the learners themselves, they write their scripts and they make their own directions 
for role playing and conducting activities second principle is learner agency learner themselves they act as the key agents of learning and they decide what is to be learned and how it is to be learned the third area is the self efficacy that the autonomous learners keep on making their capabilities improved from time to time so that the learners can handle their learning situations efficiently in this context we are talking about development of capabilities of learners so that they can take decision what is good what is appropriate what is to be preferred and last principle is the metacognition that is related to reflection of learners the learners learn from their own experience and at individual level as well as at group level so while working in group and working with others we are involved in critical reflection and reviewing and revisiting our own experiences and making it more sharpened so these six principles are key to autonomous learning there are five ways of autonomy of learners the benson and wolver they talked about this the first way is the situations the conditions the environment in which learners learn on their own so this concept of resource centers the concept of the school environment promoting autonomous learning must be valued in this way second way is the asset of skills which can be learned and applied for autonomous learning autonomous learning or self directed learning requires some skills so the learning skills what we call as learning to learn so the learning skills must be developed among autonomous learners so that the students can take decisions of self directed learning individually as well as in group third way is it is a very critical component the formal education which is so structured it doesn't permit us to think freely and to do our learning activities freely and to learn whatever is of our choice and to learn on our own ways so this part is a criticism of existing formal education structure that is countered by autonomous learning movement autonomous learning said that to learn freely is an inborn capacity of every learner the fourth one is the exercise of learners responsibility for own learning the autonomous learners must be responsible for their own action and they must own their own responsibilities and their own duties the fifth one is the right of learners to determine the direction of their own learning so when i say that learners exercise their responsibilities so they should also have right to decide the directions in which they will move so these five ways are linked with autonomy of learners now we will focus on the 
areas are the components of autonomy of flows. The first is we must have insights into learning styles and strategies. Second, we must take an active approach to the learning task at hand, doing and learning. Third is the learners must be willing to take risk of their own learning. And fourth one is the learners must be good guessers. They can hypothesize, they can see the alternatives and they can take proper decision. Next is they should attend to far as well as to the content and place importance on accuracy as well as appropriacy. How I will learn, to what extent I will learn, what is appropriate and what is accurate. So a learner must be capable enough to decide about learning conditions, learning situations and the relevance of learning the experiences. Next is the learners must develop the target language. The target should be contextual in nature. It may be in the context of our own cultural, social, economic settings, environmental settings. It may be related to the context of development of skills. It may be related to development of our own value systems and we must revise, we must reformulate our targets. Next is we must have a tolerant approach. Without tolerance, without tolerance, we cannot have flexibility, there will be rigidity. There are misconceptions about autonomy. The first misconception is that Usually we say that autonomy means self-instruction. It is not that. It can be learning from various sources with guidance, with support, with facilitations, and it can be group learning also. Second misconception is that, that as if Classroom condition is antagonistic to uh, self-directed learning. It is another misconception. In classroom situation also, we can encourage autonomous learning and self-directed learning practices. And in this context, teachers play a major role in facilitating autonomous learning. Third area is, usually people say autonomous learning means a new method. No, it is not that. It is not a method. It is a philosophy. It is a principle on the basis of which we decide our pedagogic practices. Autonomy is manifested in multiple forms. Autonomy is not just one idea. It can be many concepts and multiple interpretations. Autonomy is not restricted to a few learners. Autonomy is very much inclusive in nature. Each and every learner must be capable enough and develop his or her own capability to take own decisions about learning. Now, let us see that how autonomy is understood in proper perspective and we must avoid the misconceptions of autonomy that autonomy is not just self-learning, autonomy is not absence of teacher in classroom, autonomy doesn't mean that it is restricted only to a few people. Autonomy is not just a method of teaching. Autonomy 
is not one area, rather autonomy is multiple concept. Now, let us see autonomy of learning and autonomous learning and constructivism. The constructive principles, constructivism's guidelines insist on a humanistic principle where every learner with her or his abilities in his or her own cultural context can develop personal construct. So, every learner has ability to construct and such construction takes place in specific socio-cultural context. The second interpretation is autonomy in learning involves capacity of learners self-directed action. There are learners who are more capable enough to take self-directions in certain areas. So, the capabilities of learners for self-directed learning is a significant factor for learners' engagement and constructing knowledge and developing own understanding. Now, we will talk about the relationship between teacher's autonomy and learner's autonomy. So, in order to promote learner autonomy and teacher's autonomy, Smith 2008 said that there are three kinds of capacities of teachers. One is the teacher's capacity for self-directed teaching. Second is the teacher's freedom to control their teaching. And there should be no control on their teaching. So it should be freedom from any control from outside on their teaching. Third is a teacher's capacity for self-directed teaching, what to teach, how to teach. So they should learn to develop their capacities. So it is the teachers must learn how to develop self-directed teaching learning. Now, there are different approaches for preparing teachers and teacher educators for promoting learners' autonomy. One is action research. So, action research helps us for orienting teachers and teacher educators to develop capabilities for self-directed learning and self-directed teaching. Various strategies are to be adapted to incorporate developing willingness and capacity of teachers. The willingness and capacity of teachers are essential components of autonomous teaching and learning. Teachers must be, we must be aware of different constraints and difficulties and to be resilient about overcoming such constraints and to be engaged in self-directed teaching. Capacity facilitation should take place so that the teachers must be empowered to identify their own abilities and capacities. And such capabilities should be utilized properly for own teaching and learning situations. So what are different strategies of autonomous learning? There are different strategies like self-report, what I teach, how I teach, I must maintain diary and I must be vigilant about my own action and I must record it 
in writings. And then I must have persuasive communication within myself and others that how I did, what I should do. So I should put myself as a learner, I should put myself as a teacher, so a conversational, persuasive communication based approach takes place while making self-report, diaries and evaluation sheets of teachers. Next is the classroom management of autonomous learning. So how we manage our classroom for promoting autonomous learning? Classroom management for autonomous learning is based on humanistic philosophy. So humanistic management principles of classroom has two areas. One is facilitation activities and another is maintenance activities. So as a humanist manager, we will have to facilitate the activities for achieving unity and cooperation among learners and teachers. Second is we must establish standards. The learners must be free to establish the objectives and we must coordinate the work procedures of our students as per their own decisions. We must use the problem solving approach to improve our capacities and we must improve the learning conditions for encouraging autonomous learning. And in facilitation activity, we must change the established pattern of group behavior. There should be flexibilities which must be encouraged on the basis of day-to-day -day practices of teaching and learning. So teacher as a facilitator must extend supports for autonomous learning on these four areas. Next is the maintenance activity. As teacher manager, we must maintain and restore morals of learners. We must boost morals of students for self-directed learning and decision making instead of discouraging them. It is natural that there will be several conflicts and we must adopt appropriate measures how to resolve these conflicts through dialogues through mutual understandings, appreciations, so there are different mechanisms of conflict resolutions in classroom conditions. Then we must have proper administrative and management support from our institutions for minimizing the management problems. So there should not be much complications. We must encourage supportive practices to promote students' autonomy. In one way is that we must provide organizational support by our teachers, colleagues and our institution. Secondly, we must promote procedural support that how best students will be engaged in coordinated and cooperative learning practices and their own decision-making abilities. Third one is cognitive autonomy support. We must provide opportunities for reflections, self-reflections, group-based activities, critical reflections, and such exercises should be conducted to proliferate the abilities of learners for autonomy and decision-making. Next is we must have a proactive classroom management practice. So in proactive classroom management practice, we must be prepared for taking suitable activities and actions before students come to school and before students are engaged in various activities. So teacher's role is very much significant in understanding and creating proper environment prior to students' arrival and their engagement in different self-directed learning activities. 
Second pro uh, area is during interactions with students and students' arrival, we must be very much free to assess and to extend support to them. When students arrive, and we must have interactions with them and be free to understand them and to extend support as per the interaction takes place with students on their arrival. The third is that during teaching learning practices, as I said, there may be many constraints, conflicts and problems, so a teacher should be always be visible and vigilant about the students' activities. On sometimes the students may have misbehavior, problems, and creating indisciplines. So we should be very much vigilant about such conditions of learning, and we must provide proper leadership and apply suitable management strategies to minimize the problems coming from students and to support and encourage the autonomy in teaching, learning and assessment practices. Thank you very much.